And by now, fam, you have noticed that everything is in somewhat of a compound. So, Mr. Bura, he is going to be your guide inside the museum. You start with here, and then you go there, and then you finish up to the last building, and then we'll be ready to go, heading to the village. Before we leave this place, I will recommend you to use the washroom. Uh, because when we get to the village, we'll start with the school, and I'm not very sure with the washroom condition at the school. Well, we can always give somebody a shovel. <laughs> so, so we, after this place, will be fully occupied in terms of our thinking for the history of Tanganyika, Tanzania, and uh, I don't know if we go back to Tanganyika again, so he will tell you all of that. Excellent, excellent. Okay, good morning. Good morning. good morning. You are warmly welcome. My name is Bura. This is a very rich place for the history of Tanzania. It has a three era of history before colonial settlement and then a colonial time and after independence. So the structure that you see it was a military base during German colonial time and later after independence it became the government offices. So inside there you will get a history about the German colonial regimes, then uh, you might read how Arusha starts. So if you want to understand the origin of cities, this is the starting point of Arusha city. Okay. The city grow from here, and now it's a national monument. So, but it was turned to be a museum due to the fact that most of the archaeological finding at the Old Pai Gorge, which is not very far from here, was scattered over the world. So. The aim of the government is to bring those archaeological collections around here. That's what we will feel uh, the first time. So the first exhibit about human evolution, and I will narrate the story about it. You are warmly welcome. Please ask any question about the country, political, and economic system. Who, who built How the building? It was built by Germany. By Germany. When they get colonized here. Actually, they were interested to the coffee farming at this part of the country. Mm -hmm. So they meet our strong resistance from the pastoral society around here. Yeah. The first troop was killed by the soldier of the Morans, the Maasai and the other tribes. And then German realized that there is a strong resistance. And then they built this as a defense and a commanding post. So the tower is a commanding post at the top, as mm -hmm. you see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, at the wall, you will see some vent that guide them to see wow. what is coming from outside. So you are welcome. Yeah. We are talking about the history of the human origins. This story is very important because it is in the school curriculum. The students also try to learn about the history of human origins in northern Tanzania. So here what we are trying is about this Laitoli footprint. It's found at the Gorongoro area. The name Laitoli is a vernacular language of the Maasai people. It means red lily. But what happened is here, this guy, the, uh, the one who stepped on this molten magma. There is a volcanic eruption which bring a molten magma that flow over the valley, next by thick storm rain, to cool the molten magma, and then this guy stepped on it and left their footprint. This footprint was uh, blanketed by ash from the volcanic eruptions. And recently, the erosions, it is bringing to the earth surface. And that's why you see this is a photocopy, oh. it's not at all. So it discovered in 1979. Uh -huh. yeah. So the geomorphological activity has a greater role to come up with this. And that the area is more volcanic in nature. Have you been to Gorongoro? Not yet. No. Not yet. Okay. Of course, in other types, you might be great at leisure because some. Um... If you hear about Tanzania, this is 
our famous storyline about the human origin, the discovery of Zijatropas at the Old Pai Gorge. This is the Zeus. And uh, in here you find uh, Dr. Liki and uh, his wife are presenting to the former president of Tanzania, mm -hmm. Julius Nyerere, if you heard about this, who unite Tanzania into a single national language. So that's the discovery. It's a famous point in Odopai Gorge. The discovery has a long year back, 1959, is when they discovered this. This is a photocopy. It's not the original scar. The original scar is a house. Yeah. A house where? A house at the strong room at the museum in Dar es Salaam. Oh, yeah. Yes, because it's also well conserved with gold and other related materials. But be risky if you expose. So we use for the educational purpose the, this photocopy for that uh, people understand. In human evolution, what we talk much is the, about the brain change in human beings. You to technological change, human evolve. And the features that evolve were mostly about their brains. Mm -hmm. As time become very harsh, people will think more than, and then evolve. And uh, the molars and jaws, these have uh, evolved because uh, the dietary system, traditionally they only use their tooth <coughs> to get food. Mm -hmm. But after some stages, they discover some tools as well as technology to help the, their teeth to work as an alternative. Mm -hmm. So that's how they evolve. And also the locomotion. The primitive one they use for lips. But after they discover stone tools and other tools, because they have a higher brain capacity, then they change the carry model. The four limbs have to carry the object or tools that they use. And just, they decide to walk by two limbs or two by pedalist. So this story, as you get the Oldovai site, we might read a lot of story about the Oldovai and the human richness. The area is rich with fossil because it was remained as a draining point for the flooding from Gorongoro Highland and Serengeti Plain. All the water drift to that valley. And therefore there is what we call natural barrier, that any death can be brought by flooding and deposited to the valley. And that's why it is rich with fossils today. Because of the sedimentation and the irradiated alluvial kind of water transportation. Right? Wow. Yeah. Interestingly, yes, this site is, you can have some photos on the other side because all the pictures is connected to human because human is living not alone, they live with other species. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is the stages that we talked that they are homo erector stage. These are the ones who walk by pedalist, by two legs. And there's the species that Historians are saying that these species have been found in everywhere on the earth, particularly in Asia, Europe, America, and in Africa. So the question is how they travel to other continents. Yes, yes. how do they? Yes, they are So the geographers and the geomorphologists, they, they take the concept of continental drifting kind of theory, yes. where the continent gets into splits. So during that period is where he might be existing. But also the snowing and the other to other, like in Mediterranean, when the snow gap, this can walk along and cross the country. But the better theory is the continental drifting that lead it split to other places. And this complete the story of human evolution. This state was Homo neanderthals, which was discovered at the Neander Valley in Germany. But this is the stage that the society now understand their social settings. At this stage, studies indicated that uh, they have been able to kind of ceremonial practices. They also understand this is someone's wife. And they also understand that this is their death. Their burial practices were here. So all these stages has its peculiar uh, characteristics. 
the Leander Valley, here the women are skinning the animals while the men have killed the butcher. So that shows the division of labor. And the rock painting started. We will see in northern Tanzania where the rock painting at this point. People have been able now to show their traditional history, what dances they do, and which animals they have been killing us, mm -hmm. or the favorite. And did you say the women kill the animals, or the men? The women? men are the ones who hunt, hunt kill. Yeah, and, the women. and then women will stay there yeah. and scale it out, mm -hmm. and specify the yeah. special meat for the men. Am I so fast? Oh, no, you're doing well. Okay. Is the light on? Yeah, it's, it's a bit low. Oh, I see. The story here is about the old Bible. What we are trying to show is that uh, this is the sign. And the old Vine Gorge has a history, it was a lake traditionally, or before. So the, the, the natural deposition is when the water bring here, any death from animals to human, they are deposited here at the valley. And this is the specifically why it is rich in fossils. Mm -hmm. But what they are trying to show is that the species that existed during that period are these Atrophicus afrensis, mm -hmm. who are shorter in height, but also basically they are traditionally eating roots and uh, foods. So this is the pictorial presentation of the mesological show. But here are the two species from Ethiopia and here in Gorongoro were found. And that's why the Gorongoro is thought to be the richest part of the human evolution. Because the species that found from other places are also met at the same site. And the others were not found in other places. So they thought that the crowd of man had remained to the pine forest. Mm -hmm. It's a sweet potato. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a roots, but not sweet potato. It's a different type. It's a different type. Mm -hmm. It's a pictorial presentation of how things have been happening back then. <coughs> So as I was talking about the uh, mm -hmm. stone tools and technological development, the same is the tools they use for yeah, yeah. So this is the more current one. Today people can make a ball and arrows from the stones. But they make poison so that as they hit the animal, mm -hmm. they, they can go down. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. The evolution is like for the elephant you see and this wow. waffle you see. From the picture, they have four tusks. So this gives a distinction that the evolution is not only to human beings but also to other species. But only those as tools, did they, did they focus on a specific area of the animal to make sure it went down? Yeah, of course, they will monitor at a distance as they should. Oh. Because they are not, it's not as strong as today uh, fire. But that one is they go and they put poison at the head they will scratch it. So definitely they will monitor that animal mm -hmm. slowly until it down. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Since museum is a source of historical information for any attraction, So here we are trying to bring the old pipe related with, to Kondoa Iran. It's in central Tanzania, where you can get the rock painting throughout the, 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 the region. Mm -hmm. 
and here we are presenting to our tourists and the students on how what is happening at the camps. So this is the painter, but what he paints is animals that he hunt yes. to demonstrate to his future generations and the dance that they do. Uh -huh. And to students we also teach on how they do this and what material they use. Mm -hmm. Mostly we assume they use some blood from the animals as well. Okay. Also okay. they can use some of the minerals, mm -hmm. rocks, like the Maasai people usually have some soil that they put in their head, reddish. Mm -hmm. And this guy might also use the rock hyrax urine to paint. And there is a fire below there to show that at the cave life is not very peace. Any animal can come in, but putting fire that can chase any species to come within. So that's why it's just a protection kind of mechanism. Mm -hmm. So if you are in the crater, whatever, game drive, or you do camping, always we put fire outside because it's only human beings that understand fire. Understand fire. Mm -hmm. Other species do not understand. Mm -hmm. Maybe they assume maybe God come yeah. closer there or what is that? But we don't know. So interestingly, most people will, that's good enough. will yeah. start. Yeah. 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 We also have some endangered species in our ecological system, the Gorongoro, Serengeti, and the Komazi National Park. The rhinoceros, these are mostly endangered. And the reason, there are species that are among the big five game. But most of them have been killed due to their economic value. Their homes cost up to 20,000 US dollars in black market, particularly in Yemen. Mm. And the studies, uh, research shows that by the, their powder from the horns are used for the Viagra, something like that. So, so that's why many people run for this and they are killed. But also the eco ecosystem might not support them to survive because these species are browsers. They are not grazers like the domestic cow or mm -hmm. elephant. They select a special herbs and shrubs. So selecting to those special shrubs it might be appearing due to climate change, some of them might disappear, isn't it? And then they will lack for the food. It's only animals that born with their torn of their horns. These rhinos and giraffes, as you see, they always different with domestic cow that grow their, their, their mm. horns after a particular age. Mm. This one is a task that's growing slowly as they grow. And most of them are killed, but today the protection is very serious. Like most of them, the anti poaching are under control. Yes, most of them. Yes. But there are two species they are white and the black rhinos. So, uh -huh. in color, nothing different. Most of them they have the same color, only that their mouth are what distinguish them. The These mouth? species have a yes, prehensile pointed mouth, uh -huh. while the other one has a wider mouth. So, the African are called white. The people this name is called white rhino. So you might find, but also the lifespan is 40 years old. But in captivity, they might be living longer. That's why today they can live longer in the Gorongoro crater because there is 24 hour monitoring to see any prey. It's only animals whereby lions come close and run their babies, the ranger can interfere in that game to stop. But to other species, lions are allowed to hunt because they leave the ecosystem to work. But because they have a pregnancy, it takes over 17 months. So it's a longer time to stay. So they bring a few babies. Okay. Uh, that's How many at one time when they have a baby? Only one, just a single one. baby. After 17 months. 17 uh, months? That's a serious journey. <laughs> that's a serious journey. <laughs> <laughs> Nine plus eight. One Yeah, so what we are trying here also is to demonstrate the human skill development. These species are Africans, Africanos, and their dietary system, they are specifically eating only food, fruits. Uh -huh, I know so, dead animals, hear that? So in that grounds, they have a lower brain capacity or thinking capacity. These ones are not able to think beyond more because they lack a protein in their dietary system. I thought it was going to so they always have a lower thinking capacity. 
and we move as we are dieting. This is where the, the brain thinking capacity increases. Mm -hmm. This is a mesological approach of exhibitions. And here what is happening is that the, the young guys are the ones who is sent always to climb the tree and bring mm -hmm. the fruits down. Yeah. But this mother always gives to her husband. Okay. So as he gets back from the tree, he, gives doesn't, to the husband. he, he doesn't get any. <laughs> <laughs> so that's to, they are trying to chase him out of there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> of course, giving to husband food is common, traditionally. And then he they, gives to the wife and child? Yeah, the child is to left alone because so that he can run out of here. That's how to separate the grouping in the society. Mm -hmm. So that is angry now. He says he wants to go with his foot to leave mother and father. So it's a storyline. So the, would it have been a boy child and a girl child growing up in the tree? No, the boy one. Only the boy one. Yeah. Hey, gotta eat. <laughs> He's going to catch the fruit when he throw it down. Put it in the basket. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Bomani, getting some good footage? That's Bomani, that's Kari right there. You're getting your classic documentation. There you go. This museum has a value of educational and uh, recreational tourism. The insects are very important for the society to understand because of their social and economic behavior. Mm -hmm. Most of the insects like the bees are very important for economic uh, percent. Mm -hmm. But generally insects are very important for countries like Tanzania, where over 70% of the total population <coughs> are agricultural dwellers. And the insects do what we call pollination in their mm -hmm. natural performance. So do you manufacture your own honey? Your own honey or yeah, it's today? Yeah, honey is there for the bees, but we also, what we are trying here is to train the society yeah. how to behave with insects. We do not encourage them to kill the insects. Sure. Because the butterflies have a bigger role in pollination. Mm -hmm. And the, our agricultural performance have a greater role in major society. But also how to understand the medical value. Speak, um, uh, insect like sesame flies are not found in this part of the country. Mm -hmm. So you say butterflies? Okay. Butterflies, yes. Okay. But sesame flies are not found here. They are found okay. in the part of the country. Okay. But they cause uh, sleeping sickness diseases. Okay. So we teach that simple. So we should understand. Because sometimes, because we are localized, even the medicine for the sleeping sickness in the hospitals might expire because no one needs to be treated with that. So we treat them to solve the symptoms so that when they find some kind of that kind. But commonly the malaria, we have three types of mosquitoes, but we have only species which is common in this part. Other species are found in coastal areas. So here is only Anopheles who cause the malaria. But they are not common in the highland because of the wind. Mm. So like in Gorongoro area is very few you to find some mosquito nets. Mm. But today they are coming because of the climate change. The temperature has increased. Mm. This one are the dead animals, but they have been mounted. All the skin and the hair you see are real things. Oh. Only inside we use the fiberglass so that to mount them. So the inside is not real? No, the inside is not real. It's a fiberglass. But the outside is? The skin is real. Mm -hmm. It's the really elephant, the lions. Mm. Did these die naturally? Huh? These animals, did they die naturally? Yeah, in some cases because we, we call it, uh, Cropping to reduce the male because they kill each other. So it can happen because we have got a hunting program where teachers are selected so that they can prune them. 
but some others might die by their age and others are killed by the hunting tourism or purposely for request from the society. Yeah. These, yeah. these in particular, yeah. were these hunted or were these, these, the specific This, this one, they have been hunted for the domestic meat. That is Elan, the fourth biggest animals, like the buffalo. You will find most of them are male here. In the cropping, we don't kill the female, only male, because the male are the ones who kill, who fight. So to protect the skin, we pull them. So if I go up to a female lion, she's not going to eat me? Yeah, not commonly, unless. Not commonly, that's not a good thing. Unless on request by special. You need a guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take a chance? And that's for a special request, then uh, that can happen. <laughs> yeah. So, but we have an ecological exhibition, we'll see them for photographing on the other side. This is more of the workshop area. Oh, okay. oh, the family, this is a workshop. Like, uh, okay. Yeah. Let me get out you guys, man. Oh, yeah, okay. 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 All right, family, so that was one building full of natural history. I'm going to give you a continuous footage on the rest.